This video is sponsored by EA Games. Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central and welcome to Hitscan and welcome to an Apex Legends video. We've never done one of these, but real quick shout out to EA and the Game Changers program for inviting us to play Apex Legends new game mode. That's the main thing that I wanted to say. As you're seeing on screen, this mode has nothing to do with the typical Battle Royale game mode that you will expect from Apex Legends. It's actually something brand new, a 3v3 permanent arena game mode that's added into Apex Legends. All I'll say generally is if you're interested in other games that are on this channel, there's a strong chance that you'll be interested in arenas overall. So in this video we're going to go as a complete beginner's guide highlighting stuff that you might want to pick up before you get started but I also want to get into the nitty gritty everything you need to know details when it comes to numbers, how the game mode functions, stuff that wasn't included in the trailer that you'll really want to know before it comes out officially on May the 4th, how much certain abilities cost, how many charges you get of Bloodhound's uh, Eyes of the All Father by default, you know answering those questions so whether you're completely new to Apex Legends or whether you're a veteran and honestly know more about Apex Legends than I do, there is going to be information in this video that I think is going to be super important for you guys to know when this game mode comes out. But first, let's talk about the general basics. You'll start off by selecting your legend in the normal way that you would do in the Battle Royale game mode, but don't worry if you know nothing about any of the legends and their abilities, I'll link some resources in the description below and we'll highlight each of them and their abilities briefly towards the end of this video. Next up you'll come into the game and you'll be brought into the buy phase. You'll be given a set amount of credits and 30 seconds to buy yourself some weapons, some items such as health and shield kits but also abilities and maybe even ultimates for the character that you're playing. If you want to know more about the numbers and stuff, you can skip ahead to the economy section, but the 30 seconds will pass, the buy phase will end, the spawn doors will open, and then it's game time. You have to eliminate the enemy team or be eliminated yourself. As time goes on, you open these spawn doors, you have full access to the map, but as you'll see in the gameplay in the background, the ring will come in, very synonymous with battle royales, and the battlefield will get smaller and smaller until one team comes out the victor. This is where we get into the important information. That is winning one round. How does a team win a whole match? Well, for a team to win the whole shebang, they'll either need to win three points in 3-0 or 3-1 fashion, or win by a two-point margin. Meaning that if we have two teams and the score is 2 all, a team would have to win with a scoreline of 4-2 or 5-3 instead. If it goes all the way with a scoreline of 4-all, then we do enter a sudden death map, where the winner of that round wins the whole thing 5-4, but every team will have red rechargeable armor and much more crafting material to buy a really beefy loadout, again we'll hit the numbers in just a second. And that brings us on to the economy of the game and how that works. A key thing that I haven't mentioned until now is that every time a round finishes, the economy will be completely reset, meaning that the guns and items that you buy in that round will not carry over to the next. This is applicable for everything other than a Legends Ultimate or Tactical Charges of their abilities. You will however get a default amount of items and abilities at the start of each round that you won't need to buy. For example with items you'll always have two small med kits and two small shield kits, you don't need to buy those. You can buy more if you want, but at least you'll have those two things at the very start if you don't have any money available for more. For legend abilities, it's similar but it varies when you go from character to character. For example Bloodhound, with his eye of the all father tactical ability, the recon ability, you'll always get one at the start of a round, and Caustic will always Always have free canisters available to him at the start of the round. You can buy more charges, each legend might give you a set amount of charges that you can get, for Bloodhound you can get three of those abilities, for Bangalore you can get five smoke launcher charges, it's very dependent and the currency price of each of these legends tactical abilities will vary depending on how powerful it is. We are going to highlight how much everything costs for each of the characters towards the end of this video, but it is important to note that economically some legends are much stronger than others, maybe their abilities cost too much and you only get a set amount of charges in the arenas game mode that they're not as good, for example. You also have this really interesting dynamic with the characters, with the fact that you have to buy your ultimate, you don't earn it over time, you have to spend credits in order to get it. You can also only buy your ultimate from round 2 onwards. You can't bring out the mother load in round 1 for example, you need to wait a while. And for some of the legends, after you use your ultimate, 
you might have to wait two rounds before you can use it again, but this is another thing that's variant dependent on which character you're playing. Octane's ult, for example, the jump pack that gives you a bit of a boost, you don't have a cooldown. You can use it round after round after round if you have the money, but something like Horizon's Black Hole, you need to wait at least two rounds. Not sure if there's any other examples of that, I'll try and find out more in the future. It does work out for some characters, however. Let's say that they just have a terrible ultimate, then it works out because you don't need to spend any cash in order to get them. Loba's ultimate is a really good example where it picks up nearby weapons. In this game mode, it's not really applicable, so save your money, don't spend it getting Loba's ultimate, and you can spend it on some other stuff too. But for characters like Gibraltar and Bloodhound, again, who have solid ultimates, it's another financial factor to consider. So let's talk about how to earn this economy, this currency that you use to buy weapons and all of the stuff that you need. There's four main ways that you will earn this money. The first one is just the amount that you get flat out at the start of each of the rounds. For example, in the first round, you will automatically get 550 that you can then spend on what you need. And as the game progresses, you will naturally just earn more and more currency. In the second round, it's 800. Third round, 1,150. Fourth round is 1,500. Fifth round is 1750, you get the point, you can see the rest on screen. A key thing to mention as well is that these will go up regardless of whether you won or lost the round. Both teams will get the same amount of credits from this method at least, as there's no loss bonus or anything like that. There are other ways that you can earn this currency, however, to buy the weapons and items that you need. For example, each kill that you get will earn you 75 currency. You will also bring any money that you saved in the previous round into the next. With this one, I had 25 credits left in the last round that got brought into this one. And the final way to earn currency is with the crafting canisters present across the map. It's straightforward, you find one of these, you activate it, and you and your teammates will automatically be given 200 crafting currency to then use in the next round. So that's the money, how it works, and you can use this to buy guns, abilities, ultimates, and items with that currency. But what else can you do with it? Well, you can actually upgrade your weapons by clicking on them again, upgrading your optics, your stock, your magazine, everything from a common variant to a rare to an epic. Of course, if you have the money. If you're in a bit of a murky area with money and you want to buy some of the upgrades, you can just press left click on the weapon and it will try and upgrade as much as it can financially afford at least. But Ryan, I hear you say, I don't like using the epic optic on these guns. I prefer this one instead. Well, you can actually middle mouse button on the gun to choose the optic that you want to use out of the menu, meaning that you can fully upgrade your stock or your magazine, but still choose the optic that you like to use, much like you would do in a battle royale game mode. Another follow-up question is, do I need to buy armor as well? And the answer for that is no. This will automatically be given to you each round with no extra charge. The armor, however, will escalate and get stronger and stronger as the match continues. For round one and round two, you'll be given rare armor. From round three to round eight, you'll be given epic armor. And then if you go into that sudden death game mode, like I mentioned, you'll be given a recharge in red armor for that final round. So that's pretty much how the economy works. The best advice I can give not only new players, but maybe veteran players from Apex Legends Battle Royale game mode is not to get too over-focused on the most expensive guns just because they're most expensive, therefore must be better, right? You might be able to buy a carbine, for example, and upgrade it to rare, but you might actually want to consider buying a cheaper gun and upgrading it to epic instead. Feeling the guns out, knowing how these upgrades work and what they impact, is going to be super important but that kind of thing will come with time all in all just don't get into a set mentality of buying the carbine and fully upgrading it each time when you could actually upgrade two other strong yet cheaper guns instead this brings us to the maps there are two main maps that were built specifically for this game mode in mind but there's an extra three which are just points of interest across the other battle royale maps that we've seen before these include artillery from king's canyon the gameplay in the background Thermal Station, which is on World's Edge, and the Golden Gardens of Olympus. For this playtest, and probably for the first part of the season, we will only have access to artillery, but the others will be rotated in and out as the season officially progresses when it comes out. The first map is Party Crashers, which is mostly close quarters fighting. You can fight from distance using long range weapons and the high ground from the Mirage Voyage, but good teams or compositions will be able to close that distance and just dive on top of you. Legends like Bloodhound, Horizon, Valkyrie even, 
is a very scary composition that teams can run, but I do feel that Bloodhound specifically, which will come as no surprise, will be a pretty big must pick for a map like this. Phase Runner, which is the other arena specific map, is the complete opposite. Incredibly open with two main sites that the battle will be fought from, playing much slower and more deliberate is going to be a requirement for this map. For typical battle royale players, this should come second nature to you, but for newer players that have never played something like this, this is going to be the main thing to adjust to. My best advice for those players is to slow the tempo. It is natural to want to rush in, close the distance, get a frag early and not be patient at all. But on maps like this, you can be isolated if you don't have map control. And if you end up in a one versus three fight, you're probably going to lose it and screw up your team. Take your time, stay together, play the map, try and play the objective as much as you can. Now we get into the important information. I don't want to focus on each of the specific legends too much, but what I want to do is show a screenshot on screen on how much their abilities cost, how many you get by default, and then just sort of briefly mention how good I think they are, starting with Bloodhound. You probably don't need to hear this again. Bloodhound is S tier in the normal game of Battle Royale. He's S tier here, maybe even more so. His tactical, which gives a pulse of information, is incredible. You always get one. It costs 150 and you can have free total. The ultimate is also fairly cheap considering it's a boost to movement speed and helping spot and prey. I just think that if you're new to this game, you really want to get to grips with it quickly and really play a strong character. Bloodhound's the best bet, hands down. Caustic, he's more about setting up gas canisters and using gas to control areas of the map. It's pretty good. Maybe if we get into like a sweaty meta in the future where playing for spots like Watson does, it's going to be a lot stronger for this game mode. But right now, play mobile, play for fun. Might be worth picking up Caustic to get your head around him for sure, but otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. You can see all of his stats and stuff on screen, how much it all costs. And overall, I just think it's not as worth it as some of the other characters in the game. Crypto, I actually really liked playing Crypto in this mode. Surveillance Drone is actually very useful in this mode to just get that early information. The drone also just costs 100 credits and you can have free total. However, it works the same in a Battle Royale. If it gets destroyed, you have to wait 40 seconds for it to come back up again. Obviously, the EMP ability is a big ultimate and a big hitter, and thus it costs the maximum price of 500 credits. I didn't see that much Crypto playing with or against certain teams, but I don't know, it could be a potential spicy pick for those that are interested. Fuse, Fuse is okay. You can actually automatically get two charges of the cluster bomb ability and you can use them both together without any form of cooldown, which I think is a buff from the previous season. His ultimate, the Motherload, is a bit cheaper than some of these other aggressive ultimates, so it could be an option. Maybe good for keeping it in your back pocket, but generally speaking, again, probably not worth considering all that much. Gibraltar is a firm example of a character that's good in the Battle Royale game mode, but I think in this mode with the economy, he really kind of gets screwed over a little bit. He's very expensive to say the least. You'll always get one of his Dome of Protections, but buying more will set you back 200 credits each. You can get five maximum, which is nice, but you're spending like a thousand credits on that alone, and they each have 30 second cooldowns before you can use them again, meaning that you might not even get to use five charges in a round. His ultimate bombardment, much like Bangalore's ultimate, 500 credits maximum and because of this I just don't rate Gibraltar in this game mode it's just too costly to use him and if you're buying some of these important abilities you're not buying strong enough weapons and you could easily be snowballed before the rounds even started because you just have lesser weaponry. It's almost a bit MOBA-esque as well right because Gibraltar in the early game because his utility costs so much isn't going to be that strong but you end up in the sudden death moments where you've got 2000 credits to spend then all of that utility the ultimate could become incredibly powerful. Bit of a late bloomer in that regard but for getting your head around the mode probably not the best to start with I'll be honest. Horizon, possibly my favorite character to play in this playtest. Gravity Lift obviously provides you a lot of vertical boost. There are only 100 credits. You automatically start with two and you can buy two more. Honestly, I was quite happy to just use the two that I was given and use that extra money on guns and stuff. So that works out nicely as well. The ultimate is great, like the black hole, and it only costs 400 credits, which is a lot cheaper than some of the other ults. Very fun character to pick up. Maybe not S tier like Bloodhound so far, but probably just behind an A tier. Maybe we do like a tier list video in the future if you guys are interested. Lifeline is okay. 
Bear in mind that she's been nerfed and she doesn't have the shield coming up when you're reviving teammates, so that's a bit of a negative. The heal drone is only 50 credits, so might be worth a pickup for that extra bit of healing, but the ultimate you're not really going to use, it's money that you can spend on other stuff. I think it's just one of those ones that if you like playing her, then by all means go for it. Loba's a bit of a weird one. Her tactical ability being able to teleport and leap around with a bracelet seems a lot stronger than it has been in the past, which is great for closing down distances, playing super aggro, but the ultimate of course doesn't really work. It's designed to pick up nearby loot to your inventory, but there isn't really any loot on the map at all, so it doesn't really quite work. Exact same thing with her passive, so yeah, if you like the tactical ability she has, she's great, otherwise not worth the pickup I don't think. Mirage is another one where I feel like if people can be good at him, they could do quite a lot of work. His ultimate's fairly cheap as well to send out multiple clones. Lots of people seem to play him, and we played with a lot of pros, bearing in mind. So yeah, it could be a good option, but I just didn't get to play that much. In the games that I did play with him, I got run over a little bit. So it's really hard to say for me personally, but if you like playing him, you'll probably find a good amount of success here. Octane's another solid choice, his passive which allows him to gradually recover health over time is really good for a game mode like this. Stim is a really strong ability to up the speed, close that distance, take aggressive space, very scary in a terrifying player's hands. The ultimate can be useful but more often than not, not really. So I do think that he's like an A tier, B tier for this kind of game just to take a lot of aggressive space, be in the face of the enemy and with the right team and composition, it could be very difficult to deal with. It's basically smeeging a dive comp but in Apex Legends. Pathfinder's fun, you can get a lot of charges of the zip wire to move you around a little bit but again the ultimate, how much real use are you going to find? The passive isn't really applicable in this game mode so I'd say that he loses out a little bit. Rampart, I could be completely wrong about this, but it doesn't feel like it sits in the game mode all that well, unless you're playing a super turtly composition with, say, like Watson, maybe Gibraltar, those kind of legends. So yeah, could be good in a Rampart main's hands for sure, but I wasn't that thrilled when playing them. Revenant, I see a lot of people talking about how he's not great in the Battle Royale game mode, and I'm inclined to agree for Arenas too. There's just better options that you could pick up. Literally the last five characters that we mentioned have more going for them than Revenant does, which is unfortunate. Watson, similar to Caustic, where if we get into this really sweaty meta of turtling down in certain areas and waiting for the ring to get smaller and smaller, that was like the pro scene for a while if I remember correctly. Could be a similar thing in arenas, but we'll have to see on that front. I do think that right now, I think overall we're going to see a lot more play with the faster characters, and that would include the likes of Wraith, who is obviously going to be very good in this kind of game mode. The abilities are fairly cheap. Her ultimate is pretty cheap as well. You have this high aggressive fast placed game style and when you pair that with an Octane, you pair that with a Valkyrie or a Horizon, yeah, could be interesting. And finally Valkyrie, the newest legend to be added into the game. A lot of fun to play. Her ultimate, again, you're not really going to be using it all that much and even if you do, it's cheap so it's fine. But her ability, being able to create that space, do some cool stuff there. I think that a lot of people are going to enjoy playing her and I think her impact in a game mode like this it's going to be pretty large. As a quick TLDR of who I think you should maybe want to play, Bloodhound is certainly up there as S tier, Octane could also be really strong, certainly when you look at the pro scene in the global series. He's used a lot there, but that might be because he's more about scouting for loot and for information early in the Battle Royale. Maybe those useful aspects don't translate well into arenas at all, hard to say. Valkyrie could be really fun and strong. Wraith and Horizon are very fun, and I could imagine being played a lot in this game mode. It's kind of what you expect to see in a pro scene normally, other than Gibraltar who I think might be ushered out a bit more because all of his stuff costs so much money. But honestly, there's no ranked in the game, it will come in the future. Use this chance to have fun, try out all of the different characters and see how you feel with it. And that's everything in this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something as well. There's people that have got thousands more hours in Apex Legends than me, but I still hope that there was something in this video that you went, oh, that's interesting to know. Thank you, Ryan. So yeah, thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to EA for sponsoring this video. And maybe we'll do more Apex Legends Arenas videos over the weekend or so. Let me know what you guys want to see. And until next time, take care. We'll see you then.